I guarantee there's a lot about launch monitors that you don't know, and we've got Nick here to tell us all about them today. Yes, I've hit thousands of shots on all of these, so this will be fun and hopefully informational for everybody watching. You've got all the tech details that I had no clue, even though I thought that I knew a lot. But anyways, let's get into it. So talk to us about launch monitors. Yes. We're obviously looking at data that's coming from the SkyTrack Plus right now. Um, most people have heard of camera radar systems at this point. Let's talk through these two. So camera system. There's a camera, what, what is it? It's take a picture of the ball, yep. what, what does it do? All right, great, great segue. So first, yes, you've got camera and radar. Uh, the SkyTrack Plus combines them both, we'll get to that. Oh, but first, okay. what does the camera do? Camera, the ball is sitting here as you're watching Cordy hit the shot, it flies past the device. Okay. One camera takes two pictures of the ball. Okay. Really smart people then do a bunch of math to determine the size of the ball, the axis tilt of the ball. Uh, a lot of patented uh, double super top secret stuff in there. Okay, got but it. again, really smart people then can take the two images of the ball and give you some fidelity or accuracy that rivals uh, systems that have far more cameras. And so that that's given, the cameras are giving us all of this stuff that we see besides this stuff over here. And uh, club speed and club smash speed. factor. Yes, got it. That, yep. we'll get to that part with the radar. So yes, okay. this is doing the ball. Okay. Anything else is being done by the radar. So the the shot then gives you a really accurate portrayal. Indoors, the camera-based systems are the best because I need like this much space right. and that's it. So yeah. you can do this anywhere. If you have an eight foot ceiling and literally you're hitting into like, I've seen people, we have people send in setups uh, pictures, might have be three feet in front of the golf ball and they've got a mattress set up. That's all yeah. you need. Yeah. Now that's the advantage to the camera base system. So, okay, so ball ball is here. It takes pictures when it's going past, so just mm -hmm. literally like here and yes. in here. Yes, okay. you need 12 inches of space and okay. you could use, get Crazy. some good data on this, wow. yeah, right? Okay, so there's a, that's a little bit of how the camera works. Now also okay. we have a radar in here. Radar is really good at tracking things, and okay. especially if you can see everything that you want to see. Yep. So uh, indoors, you don't get to see the ball land all the way, or you don't get to mm -hmm. see the ball fly all the way until it lands on the ground. But using radar to track the club, you can have a radar, dual Doppler radar in here, same kind of hmm. tech that you're getting out of the other radar devices. It's tracking just the club hitting the ball, yep. and that's all we needed to see anyway, and it does a really nice job of that at a really high speed. Kay. And that gives us only one variable, which is club head speed. So the center oh. mass of the club, how fast is that going? Okay. Okay. So when you got camera-based systems, we think about the SkyTrack, we think about Foresight. Mm -hmm. um, they have multiple camera. you know, you put the dot on the club, and yep. So they're using cameras to do club, right? So yes. there's a difference in those systems. Yeah, they're out there in the world, but yeah. they all kind of do the same thing. They're okay. tracking pictures of the ball. How many cameras you have determines the size of the hitting area that you can have okay. and how, um, uh, how many cameras are looking at the ball. Okay. But, but really to make a, a really good product like what SkyTrack Plus is doing and make it um, good, great for a golf tech bay. I mean, mm -hmm. we use these for teaching over 1.8 million lessons a year. Wow. This is our our favorite device right now. Okay. Uh, so we use it for that, but it's also not $20,000. It's 10% right. of that cost right. or so, so that uh, your stu our students can buy one, take one home, and practice on the same kind of tech that they use in lesson base. Yep. So for us, that's a just a massive win and, and really the start of what we what we wanted to do together. Yep. Yep. Um, so the, you had the original SkyTrack here as well to go back in time a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this one is almost 15 years old. That's great. <clears throat> so since then we've had uh, some updates in the Wi-Fi tech and the cameras itself. I mean, there's it's just really yeah. uh, updated now um, and adds some new tech to it. Having the club head speed has enabled us to give you the club data that you see on there also. Sure. I think you were alluding to that. All these techs do different things really well. The camera-based system indoors is really nice. And you feel that's accurate enough for your oh, yeah. teaching and coaching. This is all, I, I don't need anything more than okay. this. And I think we can get the, the error tolerance below a degree or okay. a degree and a half with a driver. But whether your swing path is three degrees or 4.5 degrees, yeah. as an amateur golfer, at any level, it doesn't matter. And yeah. I'm saying that as a guy who teaches golf yeah. for a living and is, uh, is seeing all of our coaches do the same thing. Um, that's a great conversation though. How accurate do you really need it to be? Mm. I think the ball data needs to be almost perfect. Okay. That club data being a degree, degree and a half okay. in one direction or the other, it matters, but it's not, it, that shouldn't be the mm. way that you're, you shouldn't be stressing about that. Okay. All right, so when I hit a shot on the camera, I mean, realistically, I could put a wall right here, right? Yes. And then we're good to go. You don't need, matter. yeah, you don't need more than a foot of ball flight and that's why this is such a cool device at home. Okay. Let's jump to radar systems. Radar, okay. So the radar devices are uh, awesome tech. Uh, yep. I mean, they were built for tracking 
missiles off uh, you know, aircraft carriers and really tiny things that are mm. far away. The tech itself is really nice. The more of the shot you can actually see. So if I could hit a ball outside and have the ball sit there and fl follow it all the way down to yep. where the ball would land on the ground, you get awesome data out of that. How far does it track? Like a, the tra a track yeah. man, how far does it well, it's see it's gonna track all the, well, until you can't see it. So okay. where this sits on the ground, so if you have any kind of elevation up, you'll okay. lose the ball a little sooner, or down if the, the ball's blocked. But okay. it's, a, it's a radar, it's just pumping out a signal and it's okay. tracking as far as it can go. Uh, so watching a ball fly 300 yards, it'll, it'll do that just fine. Uh, most of the radar devices need to see at least up to the apex of the shot okay. to really get some good data. Now where that's challenging is indoors. Even though yep. we've got 12 feet of ball flight here, you might hit this ball and let's say I've got the, the triple track stripes here. You might hit it with a driver and at your ball speed, you know, you're launching this thing fast and furious. By the time it gets to the screen here, the ball might have only gone backwards because it's spinning backwards no matter what you're hitting, a quarter of a turn, That's maybe crazy. a half of a turn. And then the radar device has to figure out uh, how much is that ball going to spin backwards right. and how far is it gonna go? And uh, a, a whole lot more information, peak height. Right. To, all that would go into an algorithm and then they would try to calculate what's gonna happen with the ball. And then the variable that's the hardest to do in that is the amount of tilt to the spin axis Okay. or the amount the ball is gonna have side spin is often a common term. So to do that, a one degree difference in the ball flight with a driver can radically change where this ball goes. Hmm. So even though the radar is really sophisticated yep. and it's firing out thousands of signals to attract this ball, it doesn't really have enough data to know what's gonna happen to this ball when you don't have a lot of space. Well, what What's the difference though? Because isn't it doing the same thing? Like it's taking a, it's just got to figure it out, right? Do the math just like the camera does? Yeah, it does. Sense? But it's got such little info and okay. the ball's barely turned at all. The radar itself just can't do that. Because the camera's more accurate or it um, gathers more info? The camera's info? seeing more of the ball. Okay. So you got each dimple that you can track. Ah. You have markings on the ball. You've okay. got an appropriate size of the ball. Those are just easier problems to solve. Okay. That's why the camera base is so much better yep. indoors. Got it. Outdoors, if you have tons of ball flight, you know, radar becomes a more uh, compelling uh, piece. And we use radar because it does have value to track yeah. a club head, but to try to track a ball in a limited flight space is really hard. And not to say that these aren't really good devices and they, they do a, a nice job with it. Yep. Um, it's just not as good, I don't think. Because okay. there are good measurements yeah. and there are bad measurements. There are good calculations and there are bad calculations. But the, the dogmatic way to view it is, and the totally acceptable way in golf right now is if it's measured, it's good. If it's calculated, oh, it's terrible. But that's ridiculous because truly everything is calculated. Okay. All of it. There's nothing that's truly measured. So me as a, as a golfer then, like what, what do you actually recommend for me to use this for? Like what's the best use case okay. for a launch monitor? The uh, best use case is understanding your personal shot pattern. Okay. Before you can get good at golf or understand where to aim yourself, like course strategy is yeah. a big thing in golf, that is the biggest separator of skill. Before you can decide where to aim a shot okay. or what type of shot to hit, you need to know how you hit a ball okay. with each of your clubs. So you can't start with here's just a blanket strategy. You've got to understand your shot pattern. So that's so what this like, will help you like do. So you like creating dispersion pattern. Like you guys got you got heat maps up there, right? Yeah. Like is that that's a big piece. Well, that's the like best visual for knowing where your shots are going to go. Yes. Yeah. And then on the back end, we're calculate we're saving all those shots and calculations of where the balls went, and we can start helping people develop their own shot patterns. So you're not saying like, hey, you need to get your you know, backspin numbers right. You're saying like, know your swing as it is right now. Yeah. Like, let's see where you're at. Don't get started that way. Yeah. Then as you get better as a golfer and you understand your shot pattern and where to aim the yeah. shot, and your aim and your target are not the same thing, yep. theirs are different. Yes. So every person has their own target that they're trying to hit a shot to, yep. but where they aim is not the same thing. That gets conflated all the time in golf. So first I'd understand your shot pattern. Then all the cool data, yep. which is the metadata for your shot pattern, becomes super critical to understand. And then from there, optimized is a cool word to, that we use all the time, is yeah. buzzy and everyone knows what it means. Then you can start having a more optimized launch condition for each type of club that you have, which okay. ultimately helps you become a better golfer because it takes your shot pattern and makes it tighter.
Right. Saying that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, that's the whole goal, right? That's is that it. we tighten yeah. up the right. dispersion pattern. Now, as a golfer, though, uh, you asked the right question because there's no place to learn about that stuff yeah. and how to do it. That's where having someone who's a, an expert teacher, that's really all they do for a living, can yeah. help you go from shot pattern to metadata to how do you move to change the metadata to change your shot pattern. And that's teaching golf. You just kind of go back in and out of that circle all day long. But people at home have access to this data. There's tons of information about how to use this data. If you had a good system, even as an at-home user, you could understand what to do first, what to do second, what not to worry about, and mm -hmm. get better at golf that way, which is why we're shooting this video series yeah. here anyway. Perfect. Well, hopefully you learned something about launch monitors. I know I did. I didn't know all those details, but I find it fascinating, and it helped me figure out a little bit like what to use, when and where. So um, thank you, Nick. Super interesting. We're gonna keep going on this journey. Make sure to stay tuned for part two. We are diving into specific things to work on and manipulating those numbers down there.